Hello everyone, my name is Toby and welcome to another RPG Maker tutorial. Today I'm going to be going over teleportation uh, in your game. So basically you have an item, like a, a teleporter of some kind, um, and once you unlock certain teleports, you can teleport back to them at any point in the game at any time. So the first thing you're going to want to do is create some teleports. So I've got four in a row here. Um, I'm only going to be going over the first two because everyone after that is very self-explanatory. I'll just talk about that later. Um, but first of all, you want to create a teleport. I've just called it teleport one. You can name it to the particular location you're in. So say your teleport is at a castle, you can say castle teleport just so it's easy to refer to where in your game that is. I would advise doing that. So the first thing we've got is a little graphic here. You can have any graphic you like, but I've gone for this little... It's kind of like a demonic little circle, but I think it, it kind of looks like a un, um, unused teleport. Make sure you've got priority as below characters so you can walk on top of it. And the trigger I've got is player touch. So as soon as your player touches this teleport, it will become active. And so what we're going to do is we're going to play a little sound effect here. Let's just show you what that sounds like. So that's very sort of loud um, noise, but it, it kind of it's kind of a cool little um, noise that will show you that you have actually activated the teleport. Then we're going to do uh, a number of variables here. So we've four different variables going on. The first variable, this is going to track the where the teleport is, which map the teleport is on. So you want to create a variable, name it uh, your teleport, mine's a red teleport, so I've called it red teleport ID. Now the ID is important, um, you want to call it ID for a very specific reason. Have it set to game data map ID. Now that's just the default one at the very bottom there. So that tells the game what map this teleport is on. Uh, the next variable you want to create is a X and Y variable for the teleport. So I've got red teleport X is equal to game data map X of this event. And then the same for the Y, red teleport Y variable is equal to map Y of this event. So these three are telling the game where this teleport is located so we can refer to it later. So this variable is teleport equals one. So this is just the generic teleport variable. Now, the reason we've got this as a variable is because we're going to unlock these teleports in a specific order. So instead of using, uh, say you've got four different teleports in your game, you could use four different switches, um, but it would be much easier to do it with a single variable because variables can vary in number between one and however many teleports you've got. So we'll the very as this is the very first teleport, we're just going to set it to one. So we can refer to that later. Cell switch A is on. That's going to trigger the next event page, um, which is basically just a different graphic. Uh, and then some text saying teleport activated. You can now teleport to this location at any time. Uh, make sure your player has got a teleport item before they activate a teleport though. So the second page, cell switch A is on, uh, and I've just gone for this graphic, it's stepping animation, so it looks like it's triggered, it's ready to be uh, you, for you to teleport to it at any time. So there's nothing on this page, very simple. So this text will show up after you've uh, gone to this page because it's set after the cell switch A is on. So it, it's all going to work kind of nicely. Your player is going to step on it, it's going to change the graphic, then the text is going to pop up. The game now knows where this teleport is and it's all active and ready to go. So before we move on to the next teleport, I'm going to show you the teleporter item. I've created a chest, just a, a generic um, chest. I've put an item in it, teleporter, which I'll go over in a second and it just says teleporter was found so make sure you've got a way for your character to actually use the teleports uh, so then you want to go to your your items create 
uh, change the maximum so you can create more than you know the amount that's default. Uh, I've just called it teleport or teleporter. Uh, I've given it a random graphic. You can give it a description if you like. You can just say you know use this item to teleport to different locations or whatever. I've set it to a key item. It doesn't have to be a key item, um, but I think you know it's kind of important. So I guess it is a key item. I forgot to mention that you should probably change the item scope to none. That way you don't have to use it on the player, it will just go straight to show choices. Uh, consumable no, because we're going to have the player keep it throughout the whole game. And all we're going to do is go to effects and we're going to call a common event. So obviously you need to create the common event before you can call it. So let's go to our common events tab. I've created uh, an event, I've called it teleportation. So what we're doing here um, is we're going to do a conditional branch first of all. So the conditional branch is, is this variable teleport equal to 1? It's important that you have equal to um, because it has to, that means anything that happens after that it has to be equal to 1. So once we've activated the first red teleport, that means this variable will be 1. So then all I'm going to do is show choices. First choice is going to be red teleport, or like I said earlier, if you want to call it castle teleport, you can say which you know whatever location the teleport is in. So you can say castle teleport or teleport to castle, whatever you want. Uh, and then exit if you just want to cancel out of it and you've changed your mind. Uh, the default choice for cancel is number two, so that lines up perfectly on that. So then we're going to do a sound effect. I've chosen teleport sound effect. A little bit of wait time, um, just just give the uh, time for the teleport sound effect to play out. Okay, so now we've got the transfer player. So um, here's something I forgot to mention earlier, that when you create your teleports, uh, you don't actually have to do the variable for the map ID and the X and the Y. Um, I've done it because I'm going to create an item that you can place your teleports um, somewhere else in the game. And then that will mean you can remember where your teleports are no matter where you've placed them. But if you want to simplify it, so just ignore doing those variables, you can just do direct designation. Uh, this is just a normal transfer player event, so you can just click on whatever map that you've got your um, teleport in and then just click where they are, change the direction to whatever you want. I've clicked white fade and just click OK. So you don't actually have to do the variables. Um, I, I did forget to mention that, but um, but the like I said, the advantage of having the uh, map X and map Y and the map ID for the teleports is the if you want to move them at any point during your game um, it will all line up um, you won't have to change anything in the common event or anything like that uh, and it also means you can have a, an item where you can place your own teleports around and then just jump to them wherever you like which is what I'm gonna do in my game I might do a separate tutorial for that but um, so yeah, so you don't have to have those variables, um, but it just helps if you want to do other more complicated stuff with it. So the uh, conditional branch, so teleport equals one, that means if you choose the red teleport, you will just go straight there, it will play the sound effect and you'll go straight there. So we go to the second teleport, this time it's going to change the uh, teleport variable to 2. Uh, so again we've got yellow uh, teleport map ID etc so do that if you want to move your teleports around if not just ignore those three. So then back to the common event this time if teleport, this is condi another conditional branch, make sure it's outside of this conditional branch uh, if it's inside of it, then it's just going to not work. Um, but if it's, you have it, your uh, conditional branch outside, if teleport equals 2, then you've got more choices because you've got the red teleport and then you've got the yellow teleport. So 
Uh, and then you've got exit, so make sure your cancel is on choice 3, which is the exit. So then you've got choice 1, you transfer the player to the red teleport. Choice 2, you transfer the player to the yellow teleport. Uh, it's as simple as that. So you can do this for as many teleports as you like. Just make sure every teleport you put the variable up by 1, create a new conditional branch. Uh, you can go over 4. Um, but just so you know, um, when you do show choices, you can only do uh, six different choices, one of which uh, I'm going to do, you, you always want as cancel. Um, but if you want more teleports, you can have the choice six um, be like next page. And then after that, within this choice, you can just put another set of choices within this choice. Uh, if you want to do that. So it's all very simple. Um, so let's just show you how it works. So we go down, we get our teleporter, then we can activate our teleport. So now we've activated the red teleport. So then I can go anywhere I like, go to my menu, click on teleporter, use it, and then you've got choice, red teleport or exit. So there you go, I've teleported to this place. So I can then step on the yellow teleporter, and then let's leave the map and I'll show you what happens next. So there you go, there you can transfer, no matter what map you're on, you will always come back to this location. So um, basically, do the same thing for all the other teleports, um, just put the variable up by one on each one of them, uh, and then the show choices refer to uh, the variable amount, as I, as I mentioned before. Um, one thing to note is that you want to have the player unlock them in a specific order. So make sure that the player has to stand on the teleport before they move on to the next teleport. Um, otherwise, they could skip this entirely, go to the yellow teleport, and uh, then you'll have the choice of red or yellow, even though you've not even activated the red one. Um, you could possibly get around that with using switches instead of variables, um, but I'm not sure. I mean, I'd have to think about that. I'm sure you could you could do that, but basically, maybe if you complete a dungeon, uh, your dungeons are in specific order, then that means you've unlocked the first teleport, do the, do the second dungeon, then you unlock the second tele teleport, and so on and so forth. Um, so yeah, I hope this uh, has been helpful, and I hope you've uh, got some good ideas from it. If you need help, send me a message in the comments, and I'll try and get back to you as soon as possible. This should work in RPG Maker VX Ace as well as MV. I'm using MV, um, but the principles and all of the stuff, it's all the same. Uh, they're very similar, really. Um, but yeah, so... Hope you enjoyed this video, hope you find it useful, uh, I'd love a like, comment and subscribe, I'm going to be making more tutorials in the future, uh, it really helps me um, if you encourage me to make more and uh, just tell me what you'd like to see. So thanks for watching and I will see you on the next one, bye!